Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. Today, we're looking at physiology scenario questions under muscle physiology. This is Dr. Bison Muntali. So the questions that are, we're about to answer from the University of Zambia School of Medicine and Department of Physiological Sciences. Okay, let's get into this scenario question and have a good time. So that was question five of last year's assessment. It says, Jen is a 32-year-old woman presents to a doctor at UTH with difficulty chewing food. She states that when she eats certain foods that require a significant amount of chewing meat, her jaws become weak and tired. After a period of rest, her jaws regain their strength until she eats again. All right, so the patient was started on neostigamine which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So now, from these scenario questions, our takeaway is that her jaws become weak and tired, meaning when she eats, her muscles become fatigued. You can tell from here that she has difficulty chewing food. And to help her, what they did was that they put her on an, an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Now, based on your knowledge in muscle physiology, what is the possible diagnosis? So let me just answer it on the next blank slide. What is our possible diagnosis? Number one, we know that a condition that is characterized by muscle fatigue and weakness after some activity is Maya, myasthenia gravis. So our possible diagnosis there is myasthenia gravis. Number two, says briefly explain the underlying mechanism of Jane's symptoms. So now, what happens in myasthenia gravis is what they are asking. What happens in myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis. So what happens in myasthenia gravis is that there is reduced, so there is reduced nicotinic receptors nicotinic receptors at the muscle end plate muscle end plate due to autoimmune destruction so autoimmune destruction is simply your own antibodies destroying your nicotinic receptors autoimmune destruction so what will happen is that there is uh, reduced nicotinic receptors which will result which will result in decreased muscle contraction muscle contraction because you know that what causes muscle contraction is simply stimulation of these nicotinic receptors which will in turn cause sodium influx in the cell and sodium influx will cause an end plate potential, potential, which will eventually lead to an action potential. The action potential means that there is depolarization of the sarcolemma, which is just the cell membrane of the muscle cell, and this will lead to contraction of the muscle. So if there is reduced nicotinic receptors, then there is going to be decreased muscle contraction. All right, let's look, go to number two. What effect would an acetyl cholinesterase inhibitor have at the neuromuscular junction. So number two, what effect will an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor have at the neuromuscular junction? An acetylcholinesterase inhibitor inhibits or prevents, so it inhibits or prevents destruction of acetylcholine, prevents destruction of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft in the synaptic cleft synaptic cleft hence hence it will increase okay so it will increase acetylcholine in the synaptic synaptic cleft causing increased muscle contraction 
you know that the acetylcholine is the one that will stimulate your nicotinic receptors and cause muscle contraction. If so, if there is increased um, acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, this increased acetylcholine is going to increase muscle contraction. So, the acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme that will break down acetylcholine. But if we give an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, it means that there won't be any enzyme breaking down the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Hence, there will be an increase in the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft that will result in increased muscle contraction. So this helps out people who've got myasthenia gravis. Number three, how would a large reduction of extracellular calcium affect synaptic transmission at the neuromuscular junction. Okay, so number three. So you know that extracellular calcium will actually lead to a release of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. So decreased extracellular calcium, decreased extracellular calcium will lead to a decrease in the release so in the release of acetylcholine hence there will be there will be reduced muscle contraction okay. reduced muscle contraction so that's what will happen if you've got a reduced uh, calcium level extracellularly you find this in the video that we've made on how an action potential is propagated and transmission across a neuromuscular junction. So go and watch those videos as well. The links will be in the in the in the comment section. Number four, what is the ionic mechanism that underlines the end plate potential produced by acetylcholine? So now, what will happen is that when acetylcholine so when acetylcholine is released in the synaptic cleft, in the synaptic cleft, it will bind nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors. Okay. And then after it binds nicotinic receptors, this opens ligand gated ligand gated sodium channels so sodium channels so hence they will be so there will be influx of sodium ions in the in the muscle in the muscle cell muscle cell causing causing um, a rise in in the resting membrane potential resting membrane potential so now this uh, rise in the resting membrane potential because we know that the resting membrane potential of a muscle cell is negative 90. So if sodium, which is positively charged, starts getting into the muscle cell, the negative 90 will move close to negative 60. Now, this change in the membrane potential is what we call an end plate potential. So the rise in the membrane potential caused by an influx in sodium ions is what is called the end plate potential end plate potential so that's the ionic basis of the end plate potential all right let's do part two of this question so part two had this question here it says identify the components of the pathway indicated by the boxed numerals okay so when you look at this okay you know inside here there's pip here there's a sarcoplasmic reticulum when you see this mechanism, you know that this is a smooth muscle. Okay? So this is a smooth muscle. Because it's only in a smooth, smooth muscle that has got uh, these secondary uh, messengers that cause calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So now, 
you watch our video on excitation com excitation contraction coupling in smooth muscles it will explain everything that we're going to answer here excitation contraction coupling all right so it's available for registered members at our academy excellent grades academy register with us and know all of these mechanisms so identify the components of the pathway indicated by the box numerals one here so one here is simply a receptor so this is a gq coupled receptor okay so this is a gq coupled coupled receptor okay so this is a receptor gq coupled receptor number two here this is an enzyme that is converting pip to number three so what happens is that let me just explain to you properly here so what happens is that a hormone or or a neurotransmitter is going to bind to a gq so a gq uh coupled receptor coupled receptor when a hormone binds to the gq coupled receptor what will happen is that there is going to be activation of an enzyme so activation of an enzyme that is called phospholipase phospholipase C which is denoted as PLC now this phospholipase C is going to cleave or it is going to convert so this one converts so it converts PIP2 to IP3 all right so PIP2 simply means it stands for phosphodil phosphodil inositol bisphosphate and it's converted to inositol triphosphate so this is what happens and then this is a, what we call a secondary messenger in the cell this secondary messenger messenger will now go and bind to what we call the the inositol sensitive calcium receptor on the sarcoplasmic uh, reticulum so which causes release release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum from the sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum which is simply the sr okay and then from there you are going to have the excitation contraction coupling that we go, that we've explained in the video that the link will be provided for all right so now let's let's answer this question so this is a gq coupled receptor two here two is simply phospho phospholipase c phospholipase c so it's p l c and then number three here is simply inositol inositol triphosphate triphosphate which is ip3 and number four here is just an ip3 sensitive calcium receptor so this is just an ip3 sensitive 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 re calcium receptor calcium receptor so those are the arrows there number six says why does acetylcholine constrict most types of smooth muscle but relax vascular muscle let's answer it from here number six so the reason why acetylcholine will cause um it will cause con contraction of most smooth muscles is because acetylcholine uh Acetylcholine in most smooth muscles, smooth muscles will cause the phosphorylation. So it will cause the phosphorylation, phosphorylation of the myosin light chain. Okay, myosin light chain, which will, which will form bridges. So it will form to form a cross bridge cross bridge with actin with actin causing 
causing uh, contraction. Causing contraction. Okay. But in vascular smooth muscles, but in vascular smooth muscles, vascular smooth muscle, what will happen is that acetylcholine will stimulate. So it will stimulate mascarinic receptors. Mascarinic receptors uh, at the endothelial cells. At the endothelial cells. You know, endothelial cells are simply simple squamous cells that line the blood vessel. Endothelial cells which produce nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is a chemical that causes relaxation, which will cause relaxation. Relaxation of the smooth muscles. So that's the reason why that's the reason why acetylcholine in most smooth muscles smooth muscles will cause contraction but in vascular muscles it will cause relaxation. Okay. Let's answer number 7 here. The pathway shown above eventually causes smooth muscle contraction. But how is contraction terminated? So contraction is terminated when there is dephosphorylation. Okay, so number seven, contraction is terminated. Terminated when there is dephosphorylation. There is dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain light chain by an enzyme called by an enzyme myosin myosin phosphatase phosphatase so phosphatase phosphatase using two manganese ions using two manganese Ions. So that's how relaxation of smooth muscle is achieved. Let's do the last question. Number eight. What type of smooth muscle is present in the bronchi of the lungs? It is called multi-unit. Multi-unit smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. So those are the type of smooth, mu smooth muscles that are present in the bronchi of the lungs. In hollow organs like the esophagus, you find uni unit or unitary smooth muscles so these are multi unitary multi 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 multi, multi, multi smooth muscles but in hollow organs you found unitary smooth muscles okay so this is how you were supposed to answer these questions and let's revise more of physiology you can you can register with us on plus two six zero nine seven five four nine seven seven nine zero. Don't remain behind and have access to all of our videos in physiology so that you are well prepared for your test. See you in the next video.